Bill, welcome to From a Television News Review here at the Oz Biotech Conference in Melbourne in 2015. On this show, I have Paul Anderson, who's the CEO and Managing Director of a company called Orthocell. Welcome. Uh, thanks, Finn. Nice to be here. Well, it's nice to have a company from Perth um, here in Melbourne. And uh, your company is a, a cell-based company looking at, at, at tackling particularly sports injuries uh, and, and other types of injuries. Yeah. So I suppose it's your opportunity to describe to our audience mm. um, what your company's about. Yeah. So um, Orthocell's a commercial stage regenerative medicine company. We really have a, a dual approach. We have a market leading first to market therapy for the regeneration of human tendon tissue. That's a therapy but for the very first time addresses the underlying pathology of tendon. And so we get this cell death within the tendon, we get a degenerate process, which affects activities of daily living, the ability to work and productivity in an aging population. It's a very important piece. So the second part of what we do in a complementary to our cell therapy is we've developed a unique collagen-based scaffold, a, a scaffold that can be used both with cells it can be used with uh, out cells as in endogenous cells from within the body and can also be used with other growth factor like substances as well. So it's a regenerative medicine process that involves both cells uh, and we also have developed a unique collagen based scaffold. Okay, so um, in, uniquely then, I mean in some ways it's, it's important to talk about you know, the, the, ver the various approaches that you take mm -hmm. because in the end, you know, one method you use is, is autologous yeah. method. Yeah. Um, although you're looking at the, these various approaches, I suppose the autologous one is quite interesting and I think is the, the one that's most advanced at this moment. Yeah, so the ortho ATI as we describe it, autologous tenosite implantation, is the most clinically advanced cell therapy that we're aware of in the musculoskeletal space. We recently just published four and a half year data follow up on, um, in the American Journal of Sports Medicine from our pilot study. Um, and that was a significant study in that showed that we were able to um, uh, have a, a, a disruptive technology here. These were patients that had symptom ranges of in excess of 30 months, they were all on the surgical wait list. And four and a half years later, we were able to show you know, some 200% improvements in their ability to function. So there's a significant disease modifying approach in what is a difficult uh, area to treat. Right. And then the other approaches you, you, you describe, could you again describe those in more, more detail? Yeah. So the collagen scaffold is really designed to complement soft tissue reconstruction. Some tissues in the body require cells. Some tissues in the body just require the support, a scaffold, and some tissues require a combination of the both. So from a regenerative medicine perspective, our company is focused on both at a cellular level and also at a scaffold level. And each different tissue type that we're into uh, and investigating requires a different approach. So when you talk about you know a differentiated collagen approach, I mean other people have used sure. collagen. Yeah, absolutely. So what is the differentiation? Yeah. So we've come at this from a cell therapy background. So we're not medical device guys, um, although we have a lot of medical device experience. So we looked for a scaffold when we first incorporated the company that we could get off the shelf. And we couldn't find one single scaffold that had all the right requirements, as in strength, cellular compatibility, biodegradability, uh, biodegradability and biocompatibility. We couldn't find one, so we set about sourcing what we believe was the right tissue and then applying the intellectual property that we've accessed from the University of Western Australia to turn that raw material into a significantly differentiated collagen scaffold for a range of different applications. And the reason we can do that for a range of different applications is because we can manufacture it from 50 micron thin up to some uh, 600 micron thick, enabling a broad range of different okay. uh, needs. So it, it, it's the manufacturer that, that make, helps to make you differentiate it? It's, it's, it's getting the right source material and then mechanical and chemical manipulation And the there. source of collagen is from where? So the source of collagen is from a porcine model, but it's also from a very specific piece of the porcine model. And just to give you a little bit of background, we looked at the human model, equine, bovine, uh, ovine, ovine uh, and porcine. So we looked at five different sources of raw material and then from each of those different sources we looked at five or six different sources of material from within that animal until we came to what we believe is the perfect soft tissue reconstructive device. Right. In the end it's obviously <clears throat> the, it's, it's the surgical procedure involved 
And then you're, you're dealing with things like cells, and in, in, the, in the particular mm. case of autologous cells. Yeah. That means the, you know, it's not, you know, it's not that straightforward from a pharmaceutical com company point of view, although some yeah. pharmaceutical companies will find it more mm. comfortable than others. Mm. So, I mean, obviously, at some point you want to partner yeah. um, your technology yeah. and so yeah. forth. What sort of profile, what would you think is the type of company that would be interested in taking this forward? So, so two things if I may. Firstly, mm. the, the autologous tennis site implantation is, uh, is a non-surgical procedure. So that's a mm. local anaesthetic based procedure. They okay. walk in, they have a biopsy, we then culture those cells and then we return them back to the patient in an ultrasound guided intra tenderness injection, delivering the cells back into the damaged area. Right. So that's a very, very strong cost economic scenario, non-surgical. In fact, we're avoiding surgery in that scenario. And would you need a surgeon to do that or would you need uh, a trained nurse? Great question again. So we have three different clinician groups who are able to do it. So we have orthopedic surgeons, we have sports physicians and we have radiologists who, who regularly use ultrasound guided injections. And that's even expanding out further now that we have pain clinicians who also see a lot of tendinopathies and even rheumatologists. So we have a, a walk-in, local anaesthetic, walk-out procedure done under minimally invasive method which provides great cost economic appeal to these larger companies. And so the companies that we're looking to partner with really are, um, are companies that are into um, a, a broad spectrum of approaches. And so, you know, we're looking to talk to the medical device companies, we're looking to talk to um, the pharma companies, and there's an increasing interest in this space, in the cell therapy space in particular, if it's disease modifying, if it's cost effective and easily deliverable. Right. Now obviously um, at this stage, how, do, how is the company funded? Because obviously you're doing all this yourselves. Yep. Um, what's your source of income? So uh, we listed on the uh, Australian ASX uh, in August of, uh, of last year. So we've just celebrated our first year on the, on the stock exchange. Um, so we've been privately funded till that point, but we're now uh, in the public markets um, and, and looking to, to further fund um, the programs as we move forward. What we really see here in Australia is that Australia is a wonderful incubator and it's an incubator for, the, for, for technologies where we, what we've shown is that there's a pathway to market, that there's doctors who will refer and who will treat the patients, there's patients that will pay and that there's an unmet clinical need. So that kind of de-risking that we can do in this environment is extremely appealing now to the large pharma and to the large medical device companies. It's a de-risk technology with pathway to market which is proven it just now needs a partner to take it to that international phase. Paul Anderson, thank you very much indeed for coming on the show. Vinton, my pleasure.